Hello there and welcome back to the High Elves Abridged, where previously we did some decisive battles for the fate of Middle-earth, and we won, we did take quite a few losses, but we defeated the remnants of the remnants of Angmar in several key engagements and took their final settlement. So that's finally done, but right after the war was over, a new war started, the Orcs of Gundabad to our east decided to invade. So now we're going to head over and take a look at that. Because we didn't need to leave very much behind to deal with public order in the last Angmar settlement, we can rush right away to try and counter this Gundabad invasion. Plus, I do already have some stuff at Litash there set up, because it looked like they were going to invade before they did, so I had some time to prepare on that one. I got an alliance with Anduin Vale. This is the pinkish faction of humans and such on the other side of the mountains who were also at war with Gundabad. So I figured we'd team up with them, that makes sense. In the next turn, it looks like Gundabad have given up on their siege. I think when they saw me showing up, they just walked off, so that's all over. And we can start gathering a force to invade them instead. And we do now have quite a lot of stuff, because with the arrival of reinforcements and my ability to combine Elrond's army with the best remnants of Glorfindel's army, we can make a new, pretty decent army and have them move out. I decided to split it between two different army groups, so Elrond can lead one and Glorfindel the other, giving us two 10-star commanders to work with. At first I was just going to sit in their fort and sit on the border, that would save a bit of money, but we don't really need to do that, figured we might as well just rush in, and next turn we'll clearly be in range of Gundabad. And here, by the way, are those troops that I sent from Mithland a long time ago, they're almost arriving at the front line now. One of the officers from among them, I detached off to go and govern Cairn Doom here. Unfortunately, some rebels are sort of laying siege to it. They're standing outside, so I can't bring my officer in. They walked off handily enough, so eventually we get that guy in there. That'll make us a bit of money and control public order. We've got plenty of cash to spare. It's still a case of not being able to recruit units. That's the main limiting factor on the size of our military capacity. So on the front lines, Gundabad have stacked up inside Mount Gundabad. So Rushing in to take it probably isn't going to be that easy. It's got a massive siege time, but we're just going to set it under siege for now and see what happens. So Elrond deals with that. And Glorfindel will just move up. There are various other targets we could go for, but really I'm looking to see how the enemy react. In an ideal situation, they'll just sally out and we can deal with the decisive battle for Gundabad right away. Had to be careful there to actually put Glorfindel in reinforcement range, but nothing happened as it turns out. At the start of the next turn, an invasion is called. It looks like the evil factions are going to go and just absolutely swamp Lothlorien, so they could be in trouble. Overall, we don't have much intel about the right-hand side of the map, but I suspect that evil are just taking over everything because we did see some messages a long time ago implying that Gondor was getting taken downtown. Here I tried to ally with the dwarves of Khazad Doom. They have tons of troops that aren't doing anything. I want them to join some wars really, but they're just going to continue not doing anything, they're not interested in that. Now back up at Gundabad, a couple of enemy armies are hanging around just behind us there, so I left one unit to carry on the siege and went to attack these guys. Had to be kind of careful here. I was very conscious of the fact that a single misclick can have your guys walk to like the tile next to the tile you want to stand on, and when you're near the enemy that can get rid of all your movement points because of the zones of control, and you just have to be very careful about actually moving your people to the right places. Eventually I get what I was looking for, that being all of my stuff fighting all of their stuff. Now in this case the balance bar is super far in our favour, and I thought maybe it's finally time to actually try an auto resolve. In this campaign, auto resolving is kind of discouraged because it's so hard to get troops back. But I thought this time maybe it's okay. And maybe that was okay. I think we could have lost a tiny bit less if we manually resolved it. But I appreciate saving the time. And inadvertently, this was actually a good idea. I didn't realize at the time. But auto resolving them will cause some of their troops to remain alive. And that helps us out. Since they tend to retreat back towards the closest settlement, and even if the closest settlement's under siege, they still try it. And that means they've ended up standing just outside the settlement. I can break the siege and attack them to get my decisive battle. Now we're forcing that sally because the big stack will come out to take part in this fight. There's quite a lot of stuff here overall, so it's a balanced engagement, going to be another classic decisive battle for the fate of Middle-earth. 
and this time I decided to actually check out their stats in more detail before we go in. The summary is that these orcs are actually pretty good, a lot of their generic troops have very high stats, they're much stronger than the goblins we were facing before, and they're about as strong or stronger than Angmar, so we've kind of been moving up in the world, moving through more and more difficult opponents. These guys don't have much in the way of pure trash, in that their low quality units are the same as our low quality units. Anyway. We're going into the fight regardless, all I needed to do is make sure that Glorfindel doesn't end up being controlled by the AI and I completely <laughs> failed somehow. I seem to fail at this quite a lot in my experience with Medieval 2 campaigns, I still don't really know how it works. But essentially we can't use Glorfindel ourselves. There is a small advantage to this, in that if I was manually controlling him I'd only bring 4 units on, instead it's going to bring more than 4, but I won't be able to use them myself so we'll just have to see what happens. I started off the battle by going and killing the one unit that I, that I attacked to initiate the fight. That's easy enough. Now I need to maneuver and try to engage the enemy roughly at the same time as the AI. You can influence what the AI does by clicking on the guy's face and giving a movement order. That kind of makes them go towards a point, but not really. It's a very vague system and I don't really know how it works. I've also got him on shootout mode to see if that will stop him rushing in. But it's not really happening because the enemy are going to rush him, so that fight's going to happen on our flank and he's taking a pretty bad fight going up a really steep hill towards the enemy. We're going to have to get in there then and start this thing. I had been trying to climb up to the top of this hilly area to then go down towards the enemy. Looks like there are some wargs up there but our mounted stuff will take them out. And then I'm going to line up about halfway up the hill as the enemy get drawn in to fight me and we'll get this thing started properly. More and more stuff went over to join that fight up on the hill on the flank, so we need to micro that a bit and get our skirmishes out of melee if I can. Here I was doing a nice charge into some guys with no shield, so I think might actually be their general, so maybe that's not going to do all that much. Especially because our cav aren't anything particularly good. But yes, things are a little bit annoying over here because Glorfindel has got all of these blobby messes going on, there's not much flanking happening, he's just kind of messing this up big time. The only saving grace will be that his troops don't die that fast, so we've got some time to get over there and perhaps make things a bit better. It's time to charge forwards and get in here. I also want to get some cav behind where the enemy are, not necessarily to help Glorfindel, but because we need to block their avenues of retreat since this is a siege drawout, we need to be very conscious that because we're fighting quite near the edge of the map, this could mess up if a whole bunch of stuff routes and escapes. So just need to be extra aggressive in that regard. Our little grind on our main front line went pretty well since the enemy's numbers were distracted by going for Clorvindel and our troops are quite good. So that's all fine really. And our cavalry battle on the flank goes okay as well. Their general is holding on in there, basically all of his troops are dead but he's still fighting us. And that's going to help us out actually, because with that general still alive, we're not seeing much routing. The enemy are getting cut down to really low numbers before they consider leaving. Meaning that over here with Glorfindel, while he's taking loads of unfavourable fights, he is at least grinding the enemy to death and that's going to allow our siege drawout plan to be more successful. Very few enemies are getting away from this battle. Now then it's time to close things out. We're pretty much guaranteed to win, it's just annoying that Glorfindel is throwing away so many troops in the process. This is a bit later when things do start to rout, we still haven't got that general but they've basically run out of men. And later it came down to just killing their general, which took a while as it often does, he's somewhere in that blob, someone gets him, that ends the fight with 100% of the enemy dead apparently, it's roughly 100% anyway. That's what we needed, we've drawn the enemy out and slaughtered them to the extent that we can now take Gundabad for free. But yes, we just took a few more losses than I think we would have if we did that manually with all of our troops under control. Although that said, because Glorfindel had more stuff on the field as a result of being AI controlled, maybe that also helped out, it's kind of hard to actually know. But at least we've done what we needed to do here. Gundabad is ours, I sacked it to control public order, and we'll destroy some buildings on the inside that we don't need. That's the enemy's capital taken right at the start of this war, got to be a good start. Outside there are still some enemies hanging around, so I thought we might as well move out and kill them. But this time I wasn't interested in auto resolving because I wanted to minimise losses as much as possible after feeling the loss of that previous battle, the losses from them I should say. 
So in this fight we just set up with a whole bunch of archers and rain arrows on the couple of enemy units. That's going to ensure a pretty favourable exchange. Eventually everything just smashes into them and we get a pretty good ratio there. 5 losses, 95 kills. They're out of the way. There's still plenty more to go with Gundabad though. I had secretly hoped that storming in and taking Gundabad might just cripple them. But they're actually mainly in other places because they've conquered stuff. There's a stack in a town nearby and then a town slightly further away has a bigger, more fearsome looking stack. They definitely do have enough stuff if they really concentrated their troops to counterattack and perhaps defeat us and then it would be very hard for us to make a new army. So that just means I need to be quite careful. For now though, we're just going to kill more enemies sitting outside Gundabad that have shown up. Here's another fight where all I need to do is not have our troops be controlled by the AI, especially because I'm attacking with only three units in this case. And I failed, so I only control the three units. I don't know how I'm doing this. Somehow the AI has managed to wrestle control away from me. Elrond's army though is full of archers and he's using them somewhat effectively. He's just standing on a hill and shooting at the enemy, so that's good for us. I moved in with my two units of infantry to try and do something and I did end up contributing. I could have just sat at the back and waited for the AI to win this one but the AI's melee infantry were mostly aggro towards me when I went to stand on their flank. So I can do this nice charge with Glorfindel into these mountain orc hunters. I like to think they're weak against that sort of thing but maybe not. Meanwhile some nearby enemy spears started chasing those mounted archers so that's great they're gonna get skirmished away and killed. A while later, the enemy are dead and this battle ended up going okay, even mostly controlled by the AI. Thank you very much to Elrond for not going too far crazy. We only lost one guy in his army, that's what we like to see. With that done, we're not going to take any chances. I finally combined everything together, so no more AI mishaps as we go into the second part of this fight, the harder part where we face the rest of the stuff. They only weren't in that previous battle because I did a night attack. They've got catapults in this one, so while it would be nice to sit around and arrow the enemy to death, we do have to be aware the catapults can actually take us out en masse as they do there. They're pretty accurate, these things. So with that in mind, I decided to be somewhat aggressive, mainly sending my cav in early to attack the enemy's formations and not worry too much about taking unfavorable fights like right here. I plow some cav into the units near the catapults to keep them out of the way and then a second unit comes in to take out the catapults. So that foremost unit probably isn't doing very much, but denying the catapults will make this battle easier. Since once that's done, we can just move out of this engagement and stand around. The enemy have quite a few archers and they'll like to range battle with us, a battle that we will win, and we take out their general, their captain, early on because it was just a walk unit that was walking around in front of my men. That goes well. And yes, you can already see quite a few bodies on the floor. We're just going to stay where we are now and start expending our ammunition. Looks like Elrond here is fake firing, which happens sometimes. But I'm sure some of our troops are actually releasing arrows and they may hit the enemy. You can see I've pulled my cav out now to await the results of the arrow bombardment. Once gaps open up though, we might as well charge back in and attack their archers with our melee cav. That's probably going to help us out. Hard to say because our melee cav aren't very good for the most part, but Glorfindel at least can hack through entire units quite safely. It just takes a while. It looks like I accidentally ordered one of the mainline units to charge. Mainly, my uh, infantry line is going to stay behind and just do nothing because the archer attacks are doing so much damage right now. At this stage, we've already killed most of their army and we haven't even advanced most of our troops into the fight. The calf did quite well, darting in and out of the fight and taking out archers, avoiding the enemy spearmen who were just running backwards and forwards trying to engage us, but never succeeding. Eventually we're out of arrows and stuff and we do need to just charge on in, but at this stage very little is left and with their captain dead we can just sweep them off the field and we get this result, losing 40 guys to kill over a thousand enemies, that's probably just fine. With that army dead. I considered moving on right away because I could try and besiege that next town. I might just about have the movement points to do it. But I didn't want to go for that because I was looking more for a siege drawout rather than a siege. At first I wanted to go for that army behind but it's too far away. For now we're just going to sit on our border and not actually do very much, waiting for a better opportunity to attack. Meanwhile in the same turn there is a siege drawout we can do. Our units who've arrived from Mythland can rush off to the east where there's another orc castle with a few guys standing outside. So let's siege draw them out right here. 
The armies on both sides aren't very big, but it's still a balanced engagement. We have a small but elite force here, so just need to use it carefully. First, I can go for their reinforcement army from the settlement, because it's just one unit to general. So I plow into them with my cab and my infantry. I didn't use any arrows because I was saving them for later. So cycle charge them a few times. Then I can hit them with the Mithlond nobles. And these guys just have such high stats. They can hack through decent enemy units like they were nothing. So that goes pretty well. After a long grind, we kill the general. And then there's a very long walk where I try to reposition myself uphill from the enemy, which is a bit awkward because they're so close to the edge of the map. I have to sneak into position in their arrow range, so they're able to shoot me while I'm setting up here. I was a bit surprised by this actually, because my archers proved to be just about out of range of their archers, but their archers are shooting at my archers, so it seems they actually have more range than me, which I would not expect for orc archers. I felt like all the orc archers are pretty bad, but it does seem that Gundabad are the elves of the orcs, it's all the good ones with high stats and good equipment basically. So they're doing well against us it seems. As for the battle plan, pretty simple, we run at them. We're going to rely on things like the Mithlange nobles and our generals just cutting down the enemy's infantry, and my decent cav being able to beat the enemy's wargs. They are a bad unit, the wargs in terms of their stats, so that's all fine. Meanwhile my archers will duel with the enemy's archers and try to win. So it seems like the units of each type are phasing off against each other. My cav defeat the enemy wargs, then they can rear attack the infantry, and we're going to be in business here, especially because the wargs that we just killed were the leader of this first army, so now they've lost their captain as well. Pretty much straight away we start to see things route, we can reposition the infantry that were fighting in that battle to hit the back of the one next to them, and our cav go for their archers, our archers reposition to shoot into the flank of the unit at the far left end of our fight. Something something something, they all rout and we win, so that's good. The result was okay, lost more men than I thought due to their early archer exploits, but overall that's fine and the siege drawout was a success, we totally killed everything there. Meaning we move on in, and again it's a pretty decent settlement, we slaughter all kinds of stuff to get the public order looking good, and now we'll just sit here for a bit, this army's not really good enough to advance. Well, that said, it could be good enough to advance if there was nothing really we needed to deal with on the way. But a bit of spying reveals the next settlement along appears to be an old Dorvish capital or something. It's absolutely packed with good looking units and their faction leader and they're probably pumping units out of that location as well. I bet it's got loads of good buildings and stuff. So we need to be careful here. While we've taken some pretty high quality locations from the enemy, they are by no means defeated. They've still got three or four stacks worth of decent troops out there. And our reinforcement potential is getting worse and worse because they have to walk so far to get to the front. It's just going to be little dribs and drabs, the odd unit coming up from Rivendell and stuff. We still can't recruit in most places due to lack of elven culture. Now, despite my earlier claims that I wasn't going to besiege this town here, after doing that battle, for whatever reason, I decided I would now, so I came down and laid the siege. But actually, this isn't going to go anywhere in particular, as we'll see in a second, so we'll set that up. What I was hoping for was that they'd sally or the army nearby would come over and attack to trigger a sally. But by the start of the next turn, nothing's happened, so I just kept the siege going, throwing some more towers in in case we need them for a siege attack. But I really wasn't very enthusiastic about doing a siege attack, because we don't want any sort of catastrophic losses going on. At the start of the next turn, we've got a more exploitable situation because those units to the north now could be attacked, killed without being killed too much so that they end up retreating back towards the settlement. And then we can do the same thing we did at Gundabad where we can force the enemy to get drawn out by attacking the retreated forces after lifting our siege. The thing is, the fewer troops I send to do this initial fight, the less likely it is to go well. But if I send a lot of troops, I may not be able to bring everything back to actually do the draw out battle, so I was kind of thinking maybe I should leave most of the army behind. I eventually decided the only way this is definitely going to work is if we gamble that after this battle here, I'll be able to move back to where I was before to perform the draw out. I'm going to do a night attack because we only need to do it against one of the two armies. However, this battle proved to be glitchy for some reason, it just crashed 30 seconds into the fight both times I tried to do it. So after that I just gave up and figured well we can't do this, 
but we can auto resolve it. The balance bar is pretty good. So we're just going to have to accept a not very good result. The only upside is that the auto resolve usually doesn't kill everything. So that part of the plan actually works. We can release these prisoners. And now indeed a group will go down to the settlement and stand in a siege drawout location. However, because you move forwards after winning a battle, I move into the zone of control of that other army. I have to attack them before I can move again. And altogether, this has taken me out of movement range to do the draw out. And the plan is a failure. So I tried some fancy footwork here, but it hasn't worked out. And the only thing I've actually achieved is now I don't have my siege equipment because I have to lift that siege to save this unit from being taken out during the end turn sequence. So that is a shame. There's only one thing left to do from this situation, and that is to actually kill the other army, since we might as well. It does have a ballista, so there's a risk it could sneak over and take my uh, barely occupied Mount Gundabad. They've got some pale Uruks, a pretty decent looking unit here. More good stuff from the Orcs of Gundabad, like those stats are pretty much the same as our like silvery units, the one we spent so long trying to get. So good stuff. They're generic guys, the Snow Orc spears aren't quite so good, but those defense stats are very high. And there's the Marauders. That's more like the stats we want to see. Nice and easy to kill. Anyway, for this battle, they've got a Ballista. And I was admiring early on the accuracy of this Ballista. It's sniping at us, blind firing over the crest of a hill. And it seems to be hitting every time, taking out my archers. This is super nasty. They are much more accurate than I presumed they would be. Maybe these Orc crews just really know what they're doing. They really are the Elves of the Orcs. So yes, those Marauders move forward and get shot a lot. That doesn't go very well for them. I'm going to have my Cav take out the Marauders. Since their captain is amongst them, it's taking a while to actually bring him down. But eventually that's going to happen. Meanwhile, behind them, the Pale Uruks are now engaging with our infantry. And I'm going to set up with my Horse Archers behind the Uruks to shoot at them and hopefully take them out. Their Spears are just running after my stuff in the background, while my Foot Archers can shoot them down over time. So here we are charging into the Pale Uruks. Luckily, after killing the captain and attacking them with enough stuff, we're going to be able to rout them, which is good because they were doing quite well in this melee, perhaps on par with their stats. At least I was engaging them with one of my good units as well. So we weren't taking slaughterer's losses. Eventually the horse archers get thrown into this fight as well, but it's already won. And now we just need to take out the spears who are wandering around, and some cav went to take out the ballista at some point as well. Eventually we do that, and here's the result. Good enough, for sure. Didn't go too far wrong. Everything went to plan, really, in that battle. But things haven't gone to plan over the last few turns, so really we haven't made any progress in the last few turns of trying to do things. And it seems that the uh, main portion of the work against Gundabad is probably still to be done. So why don't you join me next time to see if I can think of any particularly good way to actually push on and take these guys out.